Hi, welcome to the Inclusive Storytelling Podcast. I'm your host, Ashwini Prasad. And if you are interested in bringing more belonging and inclusion to the entertainment industry, feel free to connect with me and let's talk. I am at theinclusivescreenwriter.com and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at The Inclusive Screenwriter. Hey y'all, super excited for this episode. So first up, I'm going to speak about Jean Yoon. So Jean was born in Champaign, Illinois, but was raised in Toronto, where she currently resides and works. You might know her from playing the family matriarch, Amma, in Kim's Convenience. And Jean actually played the role when Kim's Convenience was a play back in 2011. And then also from 2016 to 2021, she played the same role, Amma, in the TV adaptation. So for her role in Kim's Convenience, she's won an ACTRA Award and was nominated five times for the Canadian Screen Awards for the category of Best Actress in a Comedy Series. And in 2022, she won in this category. Another name and face you might know from Kim's Convenience is Paul Sung Young Lee. He played the family patriarch Appa in Kim's Convenience, both in the play that again originated in 2011 and the TV adaptation from 2016 to 2021. Now, he also is in Star Wars, which is really great. And so you've seen him as Captain Carson Teva in The Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett. Soon, you will see him in the last Airbender live action. And he has also won awards for his role, just like Jin Yoon, uh, in the category of back, Best Actor in a Comedy Series for Kim's Convenience. Now, something to note for both Jin Yoon and Paul is that they went to many cities and performed Kim's Convenience back in 2011 for a number of times. Wayson Choi is considered one of the most important pioneers of Southeast Asian Canadian literature in Canada. He was an important figure in the LGBTQ plus community because he was one of Canada's first openly gay writers and a gay writer of color and he was able to achieve widespread mainstream success. He published two novels and two memoirs in his lifetime. Choi was born in Vancouver, British Columbia in 1939, and as a child, he spent a lot of his time in Vancouver's Chinatown. He went to the University of British Columbia, UBC, where he studied creative writing, and later on in his life, he actually found out he was adopted and that formed a lot of his memoir, Paper Shadows. Troy died on April 28, 2019, at the age of 80. Hockey is one area where it is still very white. For example, in North America and Europe, hockey remains with a lot of white or white identifying players. And unfortunately, hockey does have a history of racism, and folks would not disclose their ethnicity for fear of not being able to play. Now, Taffy Abel, who was Ojibwe, carried the U.S. flag in the 1924 Olympics, and he hid his ethnicity until 1939. Buddy Merrico played over 11 NHL games in the 30s and was part of the Mohawk Nation. In addition, Paul Jacobs was part of the Connie Wake Mohawk Nation, and we suspect he played in the 1918 and 1919 NHL seasons. Another person who is recognized for breaking a lot of color barriers is Larry Kwong. He played for one minute, less than a minute actually, on March 13, 1948 for the New York Rangers. Unfortunately, Playing for that about a minute was the only opportunity Larry was able to be given to play in the NHL. Larry was born June 17, 1923, and he died in Calgary, Alberta on March 15, 2018, at the age of 94. Lastly, Kihei Kwan. 
If you've been following Kihei, he has been getting so many awards this past award season for Best Supporting Actor and Everything Everywhere All at Once. And what I loved about him was that he went to all of these awards and he was taking selfies with as many people as he could and posting them on his social media, on his Instagram. Absolutely loved it. Now, Kihei Kwan rose to fame playing Short Round in Indiana Jones and Data in the Goonies, but he actually left Hollywood and went behind the camera because he was getting really horrible and stereotypical roles at being an Asian actor. And so he actually was a stunt coordinator on Wolverine, and he has done a lot of work behind the scenes as an assistant fight choreographer, stunt coordinator, stunt rigger, assistant director. And after the success of Crazy Rich Asians, Kihei wanted to come back and be in front of the camera. And we are so glad that he did. I'm so happy for his success. And if you haven't heard his speech when he won his Oscar, it is definitely a tearjerker. Thanks so much for listening. Be sure to like, subscribe, download, and leave a review. And be sure to connect with me at The Inclusive Screenwriter. 